Welcome to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. My name is Tim and this is a broken wire. Now if you've worked with arcade games very long you probably found one of these inside of your game. In today's video we're going to talk about what do you do when you find a broken wires and how can you reconnect them. There are several methods that we're going to talk about today on how to reconnect a wire but they all involve stripping the wire first. So if you haven't seen our video on how to strip wires, you need to go watch it now and then come back and we'll talk about the different methods. Now the first method that we're going to talk about today is simple electrical tape. And that's going to involve two strip wires, twisting them together, and then wrapping them with electrical tape. Let's demonstrate that now. Now as you can see that method was really fast but we're not going to recommend it for long term. For a real quick fix you can use electrical tape but remember do not cheap out on the electrical tape. Get a good brand something that's going to hold as long as possible but really this should be a temporary fix. Now the next method we're going to talk about is very similar except we're going to use what's called a wire nut on the end and we're going to demonstrate that now. Now as you can see in that demonstration, that was a really fast way of putting two wires together. Now I will like to say that we always tend to go clockwise. Whatever your preferred method, maybe you're left handed or whatever, but make sure that it's consistent. But for all practical purposes, we always turn clockwise and that helps us to remember when we go to take it off which way we need to turn it. But as you can see, a very quick method and this works really great like you'll see this in light fixtures or ceiling fans at your house but remember that your lights and your ceiling fans don't move and how many times have we got a question in from you guys I moved my game and it quit working maybe it's because the wire nut came off when you were moving it around as you tend to move stuff this will come undone now you can combine the two methods also by putting some electrical tape around this which will help hold this on better but we're actually going to show you a more professional way to connect your wires next so those other methods we talked about are good but I like butt connectors and I cannot lie and here's the reason why a, what is a butt connector? Well, a butt connector is kind of this cylinder type little tube thing. It's plastic on the outside and inside is a metal cylinder. That's very important. What we're going to do is we're going to put one end here and pinch that in, put the other wire in the other side and pinch that in so that the metal inside helps make a connection and allows the uh, wire to be continuously through that and will flow electricity that way. So let's demonstrate now on how to use a butt connector. Now one thing that we really like about the butt connector is that it creates an inline connection. In other words, the, it's more natural to your game flow. So a wiring harness or to your control panel or wherever you're going, it kind of just follows the route that the wire is going. Instead of the other method where it's in parallel, where it was kind of kinked like that, which might not always fit good in your game, this allows more of a natural flow. Now it did take a little bit longer. You might notice that I, you really have to twist the wires and get them in there. Also, 
you're going to have to have some kind of crimping tool. I've seen, I've tried to use needle nose and stuff, and they work in a pinch, but most of the time, you're going to need something that really makes an indention and really pinches that in there. And most of your strippers, either the standard style like this, or the more automatic or click strippers like that, at the bottom will have a crimping area with color coats. Also, we should mention the different colors for the butt connectors are different size wires. So if you need a yellow is one of the bigger wires, then blue, and then red is the smallest. So depending on the thickness of your wire to which one that you would need. Now for uh, purposes today, we use the yellow because it shows up great and is easier for you guys to see. Although in real life, a wire this size, I might have used blue. Now, again, this method we do prefer over the um, just twisting the wires and putting a wire nut or some electrical tape. But now we're going to show you the most professional way that we really prefer to do our wire connections. Now, those other methods were great, and we use them in a lot of different situations. But if you want a more permanent fix, this is the method that we're going to recommend. And this will be the solder heat shrink method. Now, to do this, you're going to take, it's going to take more tools and it's going to take more time, but in the end, it'll be worth it. Some tools that you're going to need are you're going to need some heat shrink. Now, if you're not sure what heat shrink is, you can buy a set of this. It looks like little tubes, and you're going to need a piece of this tube, or it comes in a roll. You're going to need to cut some off. You're going to need a little over an inch of heat shrink. You're also going to need some solder and a soldering iron, which by now most of you guys have learned how to use and you know that you're going to need a soldering iron to repair arcade games. And then to make it look really good, you're going to need a heat shrink gun, which you can buy pretty cheap and it also kind of looks like a hair dryer. Don't use a hair dryer, this is a lot hotter. Please be careful when using doing this method. Let's demonstrate that now. Okay, now you can see the finished product, and as you can tell, it is a more permanent fix, and it's a very strong fix. I'm pulling on this really hard, and this is staying together really good. That's important if it's a permanent fix that you want to do inside of your games. Now let's go back to the demonstration and talk about a few things that we did. The first thing that I did was I took my strippers and I actually stripped the wire about twice as long as normal. That's going to come into play when we go to twist the wires together. The next thing I did was I cut a piece of heat shrink a little over an inch long and you might notice before I ever uh, twisted the wires together I slid that piece of heat shrink on so that when I after I twist it, I could slide it back over. You can't do it if the wires are already connected, so you have to do that at the beginning in order for it to work just right. So after twisting the wires, you might notice I used a certain method of making those inline twisting over each other, kind of like a rope twist around. Where do we get that? Well, we got that very early on in Arcade Repair Tips from looking at the Atari book which you can download on our site, which long ago taught me how to uh, twist a wire like that. You need to learn that method. You need to check it out. 
but by twisting it that way we really allowed for a great connection. Then we went back and put some solder on it. The solder actually fused that together and made it really tight so that the flow of electricity or the connectivity of the wire is really great. Then we slid the sleeve of the heat shrink back over and finally we used the heat gun to make it shrink down. That's why it's called heat shrink because it shrinks up as it goes over that wire and really makes for a good permanent fix. Now one thing we might say was if we're working on a game, let's say we're trying to get the fire button to work or something, we might would first just, um, just twist on a wire nut and so that we can just test it. Once we test it and realize we have the correct wire and everything's good, then we go back with the more permanent professional fix of using the solder and the heat shrink just like we just then just demonstrated to you. Now this last method is pretty new and it combines the previous two methods that we talked about. We like to call it the heat shrink butt connector method or the solder and seal method. Now to do this you're going to need two things. You're going to need this special connector and a heat gun. The way it's going to work is we're going to put a wire in on each side then we're going to use the heat gun that melts the solder in the middle and also shrinks the tubing around the wires. Let's demonstrate that now. As you can see, these make a very strong, good connection. I'm not sure it's quite as strong and good as the typical soldering iron and heat shrink method that we normally use, but it's still very fast and easy to do. One thing is that you don't have to have a soldering iron at all. Just a heat gun and this tool and you can make a quick connection. Now, one thing that we'd like to say is size definitely does matter. So you want to make sure that you use the right color. Each color represents a different size. And give you enough room to move that back over your wire, you're going to need the correct size. But it seems like the smaller the size, the better, the stronger the connection was for us. Now, you can twist it on like we did, or you can just butt the wires together. This is what we did. We just put the wires together on this one and as you can see it's just as strong but we would normally recommend that you twist it. Now a couple things also to remember about your heat gun. You want to make sure that you put it on the very highest setting and that you put it on there a little bit longer than you normally would just using it on some heat shrink. The next thing that we'd like to say is at the end after it's on there, you want to make sure and blow and have that cool down. Blow it and let it cool down and make that good strong connection. Okay, let's go back over all the methods we talked about today because they all will work if you're just trying to connect a wire. The first one was the fastest and the simplest and that's just some good old fashioned electrical tape. Then we went to the wire nut which is the same kind you see like on ceiling fans or maybe light fixtures around your house. Then we went to the butt connector which we really like just because it's real fast, real quick and you can get that wire back together. 
Then we talked, all those are more of a temporary type fix though. Then we went on and talked about a more permanent fix that we really like the solder and the heat shrink method because that really makes a tight connection more permanent. But then we went on to the new toy that we have found and that is the heat shrink butt connector. We're going to highly recommend because it works great and it's very fast and you don't even have to have a soldering iron in order to do this. Now all of these methods are great and work for just putting a wire together. But sometimes you may want to use a combination of both. In other words, you might want to start off with the electrical tape just to, or a wire nut or a butt connector to see if the connection is right, if it's working. Then once you know it's working, you may go on to one of the more permanent fixes. Well, we hope that you've learned something today. By all means, if you have any questions, just email us at questions at arcaderepairtips.com or tune in to our live show the first Thursday of the month at 5.30 p.m. Central U.S. time. As always, we thank you again for watching. Remember, when you fix the game, you play the game.